Hello class. Today we're going to attempt to find slope from a graph. Okay, so we are looking at this same standard that we've been looking at. It says to, we're going to write an equation in the form of y equals mx plus b to model a linear relationship between two quantities using, and in this case, we're going to be using graphical representations. Okay, so let's review what we know already. Okay, if I were to give you 2x plus 5, what can you do with that? Well, one thing, you can create a t-chart. Okay, so we could evaluate this t-chart. Now, if we use what we've learned about this slope and y-intercept, we can probably fill out this t-chart without using any work, without showing any work. Well, we know that this number right here, this y-intercept number, is the number that is the y value when x is zero. So if I have a zero here for the x, I can just take this five and plug it right in, okay? And then this number right here, this slope value, I know I find it by looking at the pattern on the right-hand side divided by the pattern on the left-hand side. So if my pattern on the left is one, then I know my pattern on the right is going to be this number because slope is gonna be two over one. Okay, so if that's the case, then going from five to the next one here, all I do is add two. So this would be seven and then nine. And then going back up, I just subtract two. Okay, so this would be three and one. So that's one thing I can do with this particular expression. I can create a t-chart. Well, another thing that I can create from that expression, once I create the t-chart, is I can now create a graph. Because we know each one of these t-chart combinations is an x, y coordinate, because I know these are my y values. So if this is a coordinate, I can now plot this on a line or plot this on a graph. Okay, so negative two, one says from the origin, I'm gonna go left two, up one, and put a dot. The next one says I'm gonna go left one, up three, and put a dot. This next one here says I'm gonna go right or left none, but I'm gonna go up five. So that one is actually on the axis. Anytime you have a zero value in either your X or your Y, it's going to, the dot's gonna lie on the axis itself. The next one says I'm gonna go one seven, so right one, up seven. And you should notice the dot's kinda lying on a line. Two nine says go right two, up nine, put a dot. Now to finish off this graph, because I know I have points in between each one of these, as well as points up above it and below it. Okay, so I'm gonna connect the dots using a line with an arrows, arrows on both ends, and that's the graph that we look at. Now what I'd like for us to do today is if I give you the graph, could you come back and find the t-chart and then give me the expression? So that's what we wanna do today. So <clears throat> here's our graph and it says, what if I just gave you the graph? What could you do? Well, from this graph, I'm hoping that you realize that you can now find a t-chart from that. Okay, so let's see if we can write that. So this would be our x values, this would be our y values, okay? So now, when you're reading a graph, what you need to remember is to read a graph, we always read it from left to right. So what I need you to think about is drawing a line down that, that graph like that. And as that line moves across the graph, the first point that it hits, is the first point that you write down in your, your t-chart. Okay, so the coordinate for that point is gonna be negative three, negative one. So we write that down, okay? Then we go to the next point. The next point is this one right here, okay? So it's that point, and that's gonna be negative two, positive one. And then we go to the next point, and that's gonna be that one right there, okay? And that's gonna be negative one, positive two three and you should kind of notice a pattern in your numbers which then helps find the next few uh, dots easy next two core or next coordinates okay this one we know is going to lie on the axis itself so we know the first one is zero and then it goes up one two three four five goes up five points okay then the last one we move it one last time and we know our coordinate on this one is one seven now that we have our coordinates, can you come up with the slope and y-intercept? Okay, so what we need to do is then write our formula, y equals blank x plus blank, 
and come up with those values? Well, we know that the y-intercept is going to be the point or the x value, I mean the y value when x is 0. So you can find it two places. You can find it here, the y value is 5, or you could come over here and you could find it here. What is our y value on this one? It is also 5. Okay, and we know our slope is going to be our pattern number. Our pattern on the right, which is in this case 2, and our pattern on the left, which is 1, 2 divided by 1 is 2. So our slope is 2x plus 5. But you can also find your slope, this fraction right here, in our graph. Because we know that slope is always in the form of a fraction. Okay, it is the right hand side divided by, or the delta y divided by delta x, in this case 2 over 1. Okay, well there is another way to find the slope. We can find it straight from the graph. Okay, now this number right here represents our y values, or our y axis, which is this one right here. This is our y axis. So if you were to go from any point, from this one to this one, I've got to go up 2 over 1. Here's our 2, here's our 1. Okay. Up to over 1, up to over 1, up to over 1. So a way to find this slope, I can find it from a t-chart by looking at the patterns, but I can also find it from the graph because another way of finding slope is what we call rise over run. Rise over run. So this first number in our slope, the pattern on the right, the delta y, it's called our rise because it's going to tell me how far I'm going to go up or go down. If it's up, it's positive. If it's down, it's negative. And then the run is always the right or left version. Okay, so if it runs to the right, it's going to be positive. If it runs to the left, it's going to be negative. So this is a second way to find our slope. Okay, you can find it from the t-chart, but you can also find it from the graph. So let's look at another one. Okay, so from this graph, I would like for you to create the t-chart with the points given and then find the expression. Okay, so here let's do our t-chart. Okay, so here's our x, here's our y. Again, as that line comes across, the first number it hits is the first, or the first point it hits is the first point you write down. So the first point is this one right here. And that one is negative 2, negative 4. Okay, the next one is going to be right here, which is negative 1, negative 3. Next one is 0, negative 2. Next one is 1, negative 1. And the last one is 2, 0. Okay. So there is our coordinates. Now your job then is to write the expression. y equals blank x plus blank. But we know our y-intercept is the y value when x is 0. So it's negative 2. Now you'll notice that that point is right there. There's our y-intercept because y-intercept also stands for y-intersect. Where does the graph intersect the y-axis? And that is that point right there. And it's the y-value when that happens. Now we know our slope is the pattern on the right divided by the pattern on the left. In this case, 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1x one plus negative 2. So if we actually did that straight from our graph, I know this point right here is our y-intercept. Okay, now if I go from point to point, up one over one. Well, what is one divided by one? One, one divided by one, one divided by one, one divided by one is one. There's our slope. So let's see on this next one, can you find the expression without creating the t-chart? Okay. Now this one's a little bit different because now you'll notice that this one is going downhill. Okay, so what if I asked you just to find the expression and not the t-chart? Even though the instructions say find the t-chart, what if I asked you just to find the expression? Okay, well in this one right here, we first look for the y-intercept. We know this value right here is the y-value when x is 0 or whenever it crosses the y-axis. Okay, so when x is 0, it's going to lie on this y-axis. So I look at this point right here. What's the y value? Well, that coordinate is 0, negative 3. Okay, so what's our y value? Negative 3. So there is our y-intercept. Now we need to find our slope. Okay, where our slope is going to be 
the distance between the two points. Okay, it's the rise over run. In this particular time, though, it's not a rise, it's actually a fall. From this point, it's going to fall down and then run over this way. Okay, so it falls, negative 2, and it runs 1. Okay, so what is our slope then? Our slope is negative 2. And if we actually write out our t-chart, it would prove that. Now, one way we can check this is find one of these other points right here. So let's take this point right here, okay? And we need to plug in the x value. Well, what is the x value of this coordinate? Well, if we look at that coordinate, it is negative 3, positive 3. Okay, so that means I'm going to plug negative 3 into x, and I should get a positive 3 as an answer. All right, so negative 2 times, well, what is my x value? Negative 3 plus negative 3. Well, negative 2 times negative 3 gives me 6 plus negative 3. Does that give me 3? Yes, it does, and there's my answer. Okay, so let's try one on your own. One on your own, and then we will be done with this lesson for today. So pause the video and answer this question. Okay, so let's see how you did. So in this one, okay, if you wrote the T-chart, awesome. T-chart should look something like this. Okay, we go to the first point. This point is negative 2. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6, negative 2, negative 6. The next one is negative 1, negative 3. The next one is, oh, 0, 0. And then 1, 3. And then 2, 6. So there's your t-chart. Right, now, you could have found this expression from either the t-chart or from the graph. Okay, so if we look at our, our graph, we know that our y-intercept is zero. Okay, it's zero. Because if you look at your y value when x is zero, it's zero. Okay, then we can find our slope either from the graph or from the t-chart. Let's look at the graph first. From this point to this point, it goes up three over one, up three over one. So our slope then is three over one, rise over run. So three divided by one is three. Now if you have three x plus zero, your expression is just 3x. You don't have to do the zero. Okay. So let's do one more real fast, but this time let's look at it in terms of a star question. Here's an application question. Okay. It says the graph shows the relationship between the cost of some pecans and the weight of pecans in pounds. Which function or which y equals statement best represents the relationship shown in the graph? So we're given a graph here, and what we have to do is we've got to find our expression. And we know our expression is going to be in the form of y equals mx plus b, or blank x plus blank. We know our b value is going to be our y-intercept. So where does this graph actually cross the y-axis? It crosses right there at 0, 0. So what is our y-intercept? 0. And you'll notice that every one of these have 0. Okay, so now I need to find my slope. So I need to find some good points. Some good points. So here is a good point, because it crosses right there. And here is a good point, or here is a good point. Okay, now what we got to do is we got to figure out rise over run with that. So we know slope is going to be rise over run. Okay, so let's see what it is. So from this point, I'm going to go up. Well, that looks like it's up one, but it really, according to this graph, is up how many? It's up 10, okay? And then I'm gonna run what looks to be two. Well, is it really? Well, two, three, four. So yes, it is two. Okay, so in this one, it is five divided by two, which is just five. So this graph represents five X plus zero. So which one of these works? This one right here. Now, another way you could have done this is you take these x values right here and just plug one of them in. If I plug this 2 into the 5x, I end up with 5 times 2. What does y have to equal? It has to equal 10. Does it? Yes, it does. So there's our 10. So there's kind of an application question of how you could actually have to find the slope and y-intercept from a graph. Right? So I hope this helps. Until next time.